Welcome to the audience. I'm Ciara Pressler. We're here in New York City and I'm coming to you today to talk about business. How to grow a business, start a business, be better at business, move up in your business. I've worked with a big variety of small businesses in technology, finance, sports, arts, culture, and I've seen it all. I've seen what makes businesses grow, what makes them profitable, and also what makes them fail. So I want to share with you what you can do to be better at business, move up, or get bigger. All right, let's get started. Now we've all had a great idea for a business before. Um, maybe you are really good at throwing parties and you want to become an event planner. Uh, maybe you've been to a wonderful restaurant or you're a good cook yourself and you think about starting your own restaurant or your own bar, um, designing your own fashion line, anything. But how do you know when it's time to actually stop what you're doing, quit your job and take the plunge, take the risk and start your own business? People ask me this all the time. I have my own business. It's a small marketing firm here in New York, and it's not easy, but I've learned a lot, not only from working on my business, but from working with other small business owners uh, who I'm helping with their marketing and their business model. So before you start a business, before you go out there and take the plunge, even if you're just writing a business model, here are four things I want you to think about before you start. Number one, the audience. Are there enough people out there who want to buy your product? How are you going to reach them? Do they live in your area? Do you have the budget to do the marketing that they're going to see to find out about you? Number two, do you have the resources to start a business? How much money is it going to take to get started? Uh, how much time is it going to take to get started? Are you able to quit your job in order to invest the time it's going to take? Are the resources you need, the contacts? Be very, very realistic at the beginning. Number three, timing. Your idea has got to hit the market at the right time, especially in today's internet age. An idea has to be new and fresh, but not too new and not too crazy because then people can't get their heads around it. There's just too much going on to come with an idea that's too far out of left field. And number four, lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle would you like to lead to uh, empower the rest of your life? Do you have a family to support, to spend time with? Do you need a regular paycheck? Do you need health insurance? Are you still paying off your student loans? Uh, throughout this series, I'm going to go behind the scenes on several different careers and give you guys a peek at what really goes into being uh, some of the most glamorous professions out there. Is it really glamorous or is there a lot more to it? I am in Williamsburg, Brooklyn at Tuffet. It's a cheese meat bar and I'm here with the owner, Alicia Rebensdorf, a dear friend of mine, and we're going to find out how she got started with this wonderful business. Thanks, Alicia, for having us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, we even have some wine here and some cheeses. What cheeses are we eating today? Right now we're having the Beecher's Flagship Preserve. It's basically a cheddar format and a Boucheron, which is a goat's milk blooming wine cheese from France. So, Alicia, I know the story because I watched you go through the whole entire arc of like having this idea and then moving on to create the actual business that's here today and doing very well. So what was the catalyst? What made you decide like it's time to open a business? Well, I'd always been in the food industry um, since I was probably 15, 16, and I also used to be a writer. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point I realized I just really didn't even enjoy writing <laughs> and I was working on this career path and I always liked going to my restaurant job more. And I got more and more involved in the food world and eventually I realized that I could do the job that I was doing for everyone else. So I wrote the business plan and I did my research and here I am. We were talking about um, target audience and knowing who's going to buy your product. So what made you choose Williamsburg for your bar? I lived in this neighborhood for seven years about before mm -hmm. I opened it so I really feel like I knew the demographic and I wasn't just going to go into some foreign environment and project what I thought they needed. It was really about seeing what this neighborhood lacked and what I thought I could give them. Because there are a hundred bars in Williamsburg now, how do you differentiate yourself from any other bar someone could go to? Well, I feel like it's sort of a lot about what you can do in New York. You do one thing and you do it well. And I knew that no one in this neighborhood really did cheese well. And I thought what I could offer with my plates was really something unique. If somebody is interested in starting their own bar or their own restaurant, what do you think are some of the things they absolutely have to know in advance? You have to know a little bit about the bar industry. I mean, you need to know about um, profit margins and about product. You need to know something about managing. I mean, I won't claim to know that I know everything about this business when I got into it. I sure learned a lot. But I knew a little bit about everything. And for the things I didn't know about, like some of the cost control, et cetera, et cetera, I talked with people who were in the business and I got their advice. Um, same thing with like the build out, just all the startup costs. So that was a big learning curve because I didn't know anything about raising that kind of money. 
and it just took to talking to a lot of people and being open to advice and also having a strong sense of myself and what I want to create. So having a vision, yes. doing the research, knowing your demographic, mm -hmm. and being prepared to put in a lot of hard work and just the hours. I think that's a fair yeah. assessment, yeah. But it seems like you're enjoying it. I love it, it's the best and, job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it too, we love hanging out here. So thank you so much for having us. Cheers, Alicia. Thanks for coming. Okay, so now it's time to put all of this into action. You're starting your business, what is the first thing you need to do. People ask me this all the time and here are the three things that I tell them. Number one, separate your money. Keep your business money separate from your personal money. It makes everything easier at tax time. It helps you see if you're actually turning a profit. And number two, organize your contacts so that you can access anyone you need at the drop of a hat. It's so easy these days with Facebook and email. You can always find someone and track them down. But you've got to keep your network informed. And number three, I want you to read this book. This is our resource of the week. The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. This is an excellent book. Everybody who's in business for themselves should read it. And before you jump off and you start your own business, I want you to read this book if you want to go really crazy. You can do the workbook, it's huge. I haven't even started it yet, but uh, all of my entrepreneur friends have read this book and they swear by it. So if you remember nothing else from this episode, here is your sticky note for the week. Write this down, put it on your desk. There is a difference between doing what you do and running a business that does what you do. I'm Ciara Pressler and remember, it's all about the audience. <laughs>